Well, Long Island has dealt with what seems to be an increasing number of severe weather events in the past couple of years. I take a closer look at whether Sandy-like storms are the new normal as we begin our week-long series, The Next Big One. It's a story you'll see only on 12. It is definitely the worst storm and the most devastation. Amityville resident Betty Duffy is just one of many Long Islanders who lost everything during Superstorm Sandy. I never expected to see what I saw when I came back here. Just everything violently broken into from the surge. And Sandy comes on the heels of two other recent and extreme weather events, Tropical Storms Irene and Lee, and the increased frequency as residents like Betty concerned about the next big one. I expect to see water again, and each time it seems to have gotten higher. And experts agree there will be another big one. We do actually need to be prepared for this type of occurrence once in a while. Dr. Edmund Chang is a professor at Stony Brook University's School of Marine and Atmospheric Science. He says it's too early to tell how global warming is affecting storm patterns, but some are already worried that higher ocean temperatures and the loss of Arctic ice might lead to more frequent extreme weather in our area. Add to that the effect of rising sea levels, which makes storm surges even more destructive. Because of sea level rise, we can actually expect this type of occurrence uh, become more frequent, uh, regardless of what happens to the frequency or intensity of storms in the future. But forecasting whether a specific area like Long Island will be hit is a bit more problematic. Whether a storm hit uh, a specific locale is something that is poorly understood. Now scientists say they have a pretty good understanding of how storm patterns work. The problem is trying to predict exactly where a storm is going to hit. Take Sandy for example. If the storm moves just 50 or 100 miles off track, that's the difference between the strong part of the storm hitting Long Island or New England. But researchers say they are making progress. The understanding is uh, improving rapidly right now. Uh, because of the collaboration between different countries. But as scientists try to understand what's happening to weather patterns, the stakes are getting higher. Heavy shoreline development on Long Island is a bullseye for future superstorms. You have to be worried because there are so many of us now. You know, back when those storms hit in the 1700s or 1800s, very few people out here. But now the population just since that 1938 storm has increased on Long Island by over 3 million people. That's 3 million more people at risk when a storm like this hits. One of those millions at risk is Betty Duffy. She's determined to rebuild her home with more storm protection, so she'll be as ready as she can be for the next big one. I'm afraid, but I'm gonna do what I can to prevent it from being as devastating as this was. But come back at five o'clock and watch the sunset out of Long Island, and it's beautiful. Well, experts say climate change occurs over decades, so the best defense is to make our area less vulnerable. For more information on climate change and how it's affecting our area, just go to our homepage, news12.com, and click on Numbers and Links. And if you'd like to see more of my interview with Professor Chang and tips on disaster preparedness, just go to Channel 612 and click on News 12 Extra. Plus, coming up tomorrow, join us as Sherry Einhorn takes a closer look at what is and needs to be done to properly protect our coastline communities from the next major storm. And make sure you tune in Thursday night at 7 o'clock for our special 90-minute live show that will look at what's happened during Sandy and whether we'll be better prepared for the next big one. So many people affected. Information that people need to know. Right, and we have a whole week-long series. It really is uh, well-rounded well and well-put-together. So Fascinating stuff all week.